the hills. Brooding, majestic, ancient symbol of strength and inspiration. But to early settlers of this country, the hills were also a barrier to be avoided, circumvented, or crossed with difficulty. Once partially conquered by man, the hills sometimes close behind him effectively isolating small groups of settlers in the midst of great natural beauty. Such was the case with the Tennessee's Appalachian Highlands, the Great Smokies, the Cumberlands, and the Highland Wren. Railroads were one of the first forms of modern transportation to pierce these natural barriers, and many towns grew up along the track. In the Tennessee foothills of the Cumberland Mountains, along the upper reaches of the Cumberland River and the Highland Ram, communities took root. One of these was Cookville. A historian noted, Cookville, a mud-bound, sleepy little village in 1890, with the advent of the railroad became an enterprising little town. Even with the railroad, Cookville, soon after the turn of the century, was still small, quiet, and semi-isolated. Its citizens, however, were concerned, concerned that their children get a good education. They began a college. Today, the community of Cookville is growing, progressive, on the move. Interstate highways provide easy access from the west and the east, and a new north-south highway soon will make the area a crossroads of Tennessee. Standing at that crossroads will be a modern, multi-purpose university the outgrowth of a concern shared by early citizens for education. This is the story of that university. Welcome to Tennessee Tech. I'm Charles N. Sharp, Professor of Philosophy. Behind me is Derby Hall, Tech's administration building and symbol of half a century of service and growth, first to the Upper Cumberland area and now to an entire state and region. Tech's history goes back to 1911 when a number of Cookville residents led by a merchant named Jerry Whitson established Dixie College. They were concerned lest their children miss educational opportunities being made available to more accessible areas by recently begun normal schools. Dixie College, a private school, gave way to Tennessee Polytechnic Institute. Tennessee Tech was established by the General Assembly in 1915 and opened its doors to students in September of 1916. The 1965 General Assembly elevated Tech to university status, and the school's official title became Tennessee Technological University. When Tennessee Tech first began operations using part of what had been Dixie College campus, it had three small buildings in a daisy field. The combination administration and classroom building was in the center of the field, flanked by resident halls for students. The first student body was a mixture of junior high school, high school, and college age groups. In 1916, newly born Tennessee Polytechnic Institute enrolled just 19 students in its college classes. The remainder of its students were in high school and junior high. One of the first additions to the original campus was a wooden shop building erected by practical work students. In those early days, it was possible to require five hours a week of practical work from everyone enrolled. The first catalog explained it this way. Living expenses can be reduced and dormitories kept in attractive condition. The growth of Tennessee Tech has been closely linked with the development of Tennessee's Upper Cumberland region. Cookville and Putnam County governments, for instance, appropriated $75,000 to help Tennessee Tech begin operations. That money was used to purchase the Dixie College property and to build the school's first two dormitories. 
As history goes, 50 years is not a long period. But during this time, Tennessee Tech has progressed from a small school offering only work on the high school and junior college level and serving a semi-isolated area to a modern multi-purpose university which annually enrolled students from about 90 of Tennessee's 95 counties. Here's some results of 50 years of work and growth. Tech's administration building stands on the site of Dixie University's first building. Atop it sits Tech's distinctive symbol, a tower on which is mounted the school symbol, the Golden Eagle. Chimes mark the hour, and a carillon signals the end of each day by playing the Tech hymn. On either side of Derryberry Hall are the other two original buildings of Tennessee Tech. Once resident halls, they have since been converted into classroom buildings. Also around the main quadrangle are the Jerry Whitson Memorial Library, named in honor of the man who did so much to begin the first school on this spot. The University Center, containing the cafeteria, snack bar, post office, and student government offices, and Memorial Gymnasium. Some of the newest buildings at Tennessee Tech are the new engineering building containing the D.W. Matson Computer Center and the Nuclear Engineering Laboratory. The new science building with one lecture room capable of seating almost the entire student body of 1916 and 1917 and new resident halls for men and women. Few institutions of higher learning experience as unusual a year as did Tennessee Tech in 1965 and 66. The year was significant in a threefold way. Tech observed its golden anniversary as well as its first year as a university. And the year also marked Dr. Everett Derbe's 25th anniversary as president of Tennessee Tech. When President Derbe first came to Tech in 1940, there were 700 students. World War II soon cut the number almost in half. There were 36 faculty members. In the ensuing quarter century, both the student body and faculty have increased more than sevenfold. Tennessee Tech is fortunate to have had as its leader for half its institutional existence, a man who understands and emphasizes excellence. Scholar, athlete, teacher, planner, administrator, President Derbe has guided Tennessee Tech through its period of greatest growth. He continues in his post as the university enters its second half century on the threshold of its greatest service to Tennessee, the South, and the nation. Dr. Everett Derbe, president of Tennessee Technological University. Tennessee Tech is proud of its history. Tech's past forms a firm foundation on which this university can build for the future. With its ever-growing student body and area of service, with its new university status, reflecting curricula and administrative organization dating back to 1949, with constant additions being made to that curriculum, with its unprecedented $10 million construction program, Tennessee Tech faces an era of unparalleled progress. It is doubtful that the early pioneers who did so much to establish a college in Cookville could have envisioned the Tennessee Tech of today. And it will require even greater vision on the part of those associated with Tennessee Tech now and in the immediate future to foresee just what this university is capable of becoming. Tennessee Tech's goal is to be not only one of the leading institutions of higher learning in Tennessee, but in the entire South. We believe this university has the potential to achieve, as have older but similar schools in the South. Within its state, Tennessee Tech is strategically situated to serve most of the fast-growing urban areas, as well as the predominantly rural, small-town regions known as Appalachia. Tech lies in the middle of a triangle formed by Nashville, Chattanooga, and Knoxville. As Interstate Highway 40 nears completion, and as work progresses on the new North-South Highway, which will link Cookville with Chattanooga to the south and Kentucky to the north, Tech's location will become even more meaningful and accessible. We are proud of the fact that many of our students are the first in their families to attend college. We realize that education is a primary force in reshaping not only Appalachia, but the nation and the world. 
and in preparing our citizens for more meaningful lives. We at Tennessee Tech have little patience with mediocrity when it is less than any individual's maximum because we believe that each individual should strive to realize his fullest potential. As college degrees become more common, society will place increasing emphasis on individual excellence. We seek excellence for Tennessee Technological University in all areas and for all those students, faculty and administrators connected with it. These are our goals as an institution. One, to establish a deeper understanding of the basic social, ethical, and spiritual concepts undergirding the development of acceptable value patterns, sound vocational attitudes, and occupational competences in keeping with the public welfare. Two, to develop an appreciation of our historical and cultural heritage and of the present day problems and obligations faced by our citizenry in advancing the American way of life and in contributing fully as members of that society. Three, to inculcate a desire for excellence by creating an academic environment or a community of learners and scholars conducive to the development of intellectual curiosity, original and critical thinking, skills in communication, and interest in the continuous pursuit of knowledge. Four, to provide educational opportunities to the limit of the individual's need, desire, and capacity, thus challenging all levels of academic ability, including the gifted, and emphasizing the ideal of a sound mind in a sound body. Five, to secure through all phases of college activities the trained and responsible leadership needed by a free society. Six, to offer, in addition to a core of general education, scientific, professional, and graduate programs, including research, in keeping with the changing needs and requirements of contemporary society, limited only by a constant goal of quality and the resources available to the institution. Seven, and lastly, to share with the community the cultural and physical facilities of the college and to perform appropriate public services stemming from the institution's resources and the specialized abilities of the faculty. Dr. Wallace Prescott, Dean of the Faculties. In its early years, there was some indecision as to the course Tennessee Tech would take. Some believed that it should be little more than a glorified technical school. But men of greater vision worked for a college of technology. For a decade or so after 1915, there was some sentiment to repeal the act establishing Tennessee Polytechnic Institute. Consequently, the early faculty, in the words of a historian, was careful not to trespass on what was considered vested rights of normal schools and of the state university. Tech's place in the sun seemed to be that of a vocational industrial school of some dimension. But the realities of the day combined to produce a first curriculum, which was termed a cross between a liberal arts college, a normal school, and a vocational and industrial humbug. Other confusion was caused by the fact that in its first year of operation, 1916-17, Tech enrolled 52 eighth graders, 77 students taking both eighth grade and high school courses, 214 strictly high school students, and only 19 taking both high school and college courses. Conditions gradually improved though, and by 1920, it began to become clearer that Tennessee Tech was to be a technological college rather than a vocational industrial trade school. There are some significant dates in the growth of Tech's curriculum. One is 1938, 
when a special faculty committee recommended that two divisions of the curriculum be organized. They were in arts and sciences and professional and technical subjects. These later became schools. And in 1949, Tennessee Polytechnic Institute was organized into five schools consisting of 24 departments. This organization paralleled that of larger universities. The five divisions of the curriculum were arts and sciences, agriculture and home economics, business administration, education, and engineering. A graduate school was added in 1958, and the first master's degrees were publicly conferred two years later. When Tennessee Tech gained a university status, the divisions offering graduate work were changed from schools to colleges. Our present curriculum is truly representative of a multi-purpose university. But much of Tennessee Tech's institutional personality and image is shaped by its emphasis on science and engineering. In engineering, students receive training in nuclear engineering laboratories, one of which is equipped with a water-moderated subcritical reactor. The D.W. Matson Computer Center contains data processing equipment capable of solving complex problems in an astonishingly short time. Training helps young people take advantage of automation and not to fear it. Laboratories and classrooms are tailored to the needs of particular disciplines. A strong liberal arts program is part of the College of Arts and Sciences. The college offers courses in such diverse areas as foreign languages, history, political science, English, physics, mathematics, geography, philosophy, chemistry, and sociology. Soils, agronomy, horticulture, and animal industry are but a few features of the training in the School of Agriculture and Home Economics. Others are social intelligence, fabrics, nutrition, and color and design. The School of Business Administration covers accounting, business management, economics and finance, marketing, and prepares future teachers of business. A major purpose of Tennessee Tech since its early years has been the training of future teachers for the schools of Tennessee. One of the largest enrollments at Tech is in the College of Education. The newly renovated education building has some interesting equipment for use in training future teachers, such as this observation room with two-way mirrors. The courses offered within this one widely varied college are in themselves representative of Tennessee Tech as a multi-purpose university. Included are departments of elementary and secondary education, educational psychology and guidance, health and physical education, art and music. The College of Engineering is symbolic of the scientific and technological age in which 20th century man finds himself. This college, the outgrowth of what was once a single department at Tech, seeks to develop the student scientifically and professionally so that he can make distinctive contributions to society. It also seeks to prepare him to face new, perhaps even unthought of problems, which will call for all of his skill, initiative, and leadership. Another major objective of the college is building a cultural foundation which will help the student comprehend not only technical but economic and social problems. Tech hopes that its engineering students, and indeed all its students, will contribute in a constructive way to their communities, acting as mature, thinking individuals. Curricula leading to the Bachelor of Science degree are offered in civil engineering, electrical engineering, engineering science, industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, and industrial technology. The time, the effort, and the dedication of countless teachers over the past half century 
have contributed to the growth of Tennessee Tech's educational program. It is perhaps impossible to appraise accurately all of these contributions. The philosophy of Tennessee Tech's faculty, past and present, may be summed up as follows. Few persons associated with this school have any love for mediocrity. There is no reason whatever why Tennessee Tech cannot develop into a center of excellence, provided students and faculty alike are willing to work toward this goal. Let us create an intellectual environment at Tech which will so embarrass the devotees of mediocrity that they will quietly disappear from the campus. This can be done. It has been done at many state-supported institutions. Anything less than best is second best. Dr. Martin Peters, Dean of Student Services. Today, Tennessee Technological University provides numerous personnel services designed to make the educational experiences of its students profitable and satisfying. The faculty and administration recognize that the university's central purpose is to provide a particular sort of environment, one where each student may achieve maximum development in an intellectual, social, and physical way. The services, organizations, and activities provided by Tennessee Tech have evolved as a means of contributing to the total growth of individual students. Student life in Tech's early days reflected the uncomplicated charm of another era. Art class and daily chapel were important events. There were some problems, such as objections to a 1918 decree that all male students must wear regulation infantry uniforms to class. Rook was a popular game, but spot or bridge cards, known as gambling cards, and dancing were not tolerated. Foremost in student activities at Tennessee Tech today is the associated student body. The ASB is composed of all students enrolled in the university. The elected officers of the ASB function as the executive arm of Tech student government. Students in each of the five undergraduate schools and colleges elect representatives to the ASB Senate, the legislative branch of student government. Some Senate meetings can be freewheeling affairs, but always students are gaining valuable lessons in how democracy works. College is a place to develop skills as well as knowledge, to gain confidence in addition to competence. Today's student can do this through extracurricular as well as curricular activities. The youngster who once majored in campusology has largely been replaced by an activist student, one interested in government, publications, speech, and a variety of organizations. A typical example is Tex ROTC drill team, the Rebel Rifles. The Rebel Rifles were recognized as the top drill team in the Southeast in 1966 and marched in Washington's famed Cherry Blossom Festival. Student publications play a vital role in campus communications, and staffs take pride in consistently high marks from national rating services. The Eagle, our yearbook, provides both a sentimental and historical record of the entire school year. We're met this afternoon to debate the proposition resolved that debaters practice not only public speaking but the equally fine arts of listening and logical reasoning. In intercollegiate competition, Tennessee Tech's talking horses, so dubbed by an inspired newspaper writer, have made an enviable record, often against schools with more extensive formal speech programs. Who can deny that such experience gained from an extracurricular activity will be valuable in later life? Yeah, I've introduced into this debate. Building upon this foundation, then I would like to proceed to an analysis of the affirm of the negative attack upon this affirmative need contention. Often overshadowed by the publicity given intercollegiate athletics are intramural programs. These provide large numbers of students with opportunities for recreation and relaxation, a change of pace from classroom activity, all within a framework of competition between clubs and resident halls. 
Trinity Tech is typical of many colleges and universities throughout America. It is what it is because of the dreams, the aspirations, and the toil, often against great odds, of small groups of dedicated men and women. Few of those who work to establish Dixie College and Tennessee Polytechnic Institute and Tennessee Technological University could envision to what extent their dream would be realized. Tennessee Tech is an active member of its community and its region and state. It desires to be a partner in progress, a good citizen offering assistance, guidance, and leadership. Like its community, its state, and the South, Tech stands on the threshold of tremendous growth and it contains the potential for even greater service, not just to a limited region, but to the nation and world. Planning is well along for the campus of 1970 and beyond. And the last half of this decade will see an unprecedented construction program on this campus. More of everything, classroom buildings, dormitories, offices, laboratories, is needed as Tennessee Tech, like institutions of higher learning throughout the country, seeks to cope with ever-increasing numbers and responsibilities. Fifty years in the life of a university is relatively short. The great part of our alumni have graduated since World War II, but they already have achieved places of high responsibility in many fields, from the race for space to the challenge of education. Companies, governmental agencies, and school systems from throughout the nation have learned that Tennessee Tech graduates have a contribution to make. Uncounted and unheralded are all the persons, students, faculty, alumni, friends, who have contributed to making Tennessee Tech a spirit, an ideal, an emotion, a tradition, a personality, a way of life. The first half century of Tennessee Tech, as fine as it may have been, is truly but a prologue to what is to come. Thank you, President Derby. The words of the Tech hymn sum up the feelings of many. The quiet hills stand steadfast round walls of russet brown. On halls serene and campus green, the smoky hills look down. And steadfast may I cherish what thou hast given to me. Deep purple stand the mountains and golden sets the sun. We proudly wear these colors fair until our goal is won. We pledge thee faithful service, our love and loyalty. O alma mater, Tennessee Tech, God prosper thee. Thank you.